Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGange doing political commentary here for The Media Speaks, and uh, it's Fukushima time again. I've got so much Fukushima news, unfortunately none of it's good, that the show's actually going to be in the course of two days. I don't know if I'm doing one tomorrow or if I'm going to do it Monday. Um, if you guys really like it, let me know in the comment line and I'll see if I can get off my lazy keister and do it tomorrow night. Uh, alright guys, I'm gonna get straight to it. The, the reason I, I seem kind of glum is I've got two shows worth of information and news here on things that are extremely important to every man, woman, and child, as it were. And it's like crickets. There's absolutely nothing from anyone. It's almost like everybody in the whole world has all got to sleep at the exact same time. Um, listen to this. This is a Washington'sBlog.com. American government forces restart of Japanese nuclear reactors. Now, you might ask why in seven hells America would care whether or not Japan ran its nuclear reactors. Uh, Westinghouse... American company, they're tied into the construction of these monsters. And you also have, um, again, TEPCO. I hope by now, at least anyone that's heard this show should know that uh, TEPCO, who's TEPCO, Christelle? They're the reason that Fukushima. Well, yes, but I, I hit it with that. I don't know where they are, in fact, General Electric. And uh, it's the Japanese branch. And what I'm saying is America is tied into a lot of this. Um, there's a lot of money to be made in how the story ends with this terrible meltdown that was under control, and look, Nuke was safe after all. Unfortunately, that's a lie. It's just a lie that's very good for the bottom dollar of a lot of people that are tied into these sorts of insane notions. And again, a lot of it, like uh, Helen Caldercott says, is tied to the uh, nuclear weapons industry. And uh, you can see this. They say there's no connection, and yet when you hear about what it is that Iran wants to do, potentially with uh, some of their uh, nuclear offspring, if I may coin the phrase from the reactors, you can tell right away what it is that they're trying to do. My screen just jumped for those of you. All right, guys, uh, listen to this. Americans are largely responsible for Japan's ongoing nuclear policy. By Americans, they don't mean you and I. They mean our leaders. Archaic nuclear reactor designs, that's very old designs, uh, such as those at the Fukushima built by the American company General Electric, were chosen because they were good for making nuclear bombs. Did you hear that? It's about power and energy and saving the planet. The U.S. secretly helped Japan develop its nuclear weapons program starting in the 1980s. There wasn't much global warming talk in the 1980s. Therefore, the U.S. played a large role in Japan's development of nuclear energy. After the Fukushima disaster, in an effort to protect the American nuclear industry, what can you do to stop this? You can get your money out of GE. You can get your money out of uh, anything that's in a mutual fund that's tied to a nuclear power plant. If you must be in mutual funds, and I don't suggest it, I go to um, infrastructure nuclear funds because it's... Uh, it doesn't contribute to things like this. Because in an effort to protect the American nuclear industry, who your tax dollars support, the U.S. has joined Japan in raising acceptable radiation levels. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton also signed a pact with her counterpart in Japan, agreeing, and there's links all over this for those of you that doubt me, agreeing that the U.S. will continue buying seafood from Japan despite the fact that the FDA is refusing to test seafood for radiation in any meaningful fashion. So U.S. actions are helping to protect the pro-nuclear policy in Japan. Do you understand that? How many of you eat fish or any kind of seafood at all? Do you know that uh, you're probably eating it thinking that Fukushima is safe? Well, let me ask you something. Is safe based on what? Because they're not testing it. You know that. They're not testing it. I talked about this in 2012 when I went and we made the uh, movie Bilderberg. Why it matters to me. Look it up. It's online. You, got to, you can't be eating seafood. If you're going to eat anything at all, make sure it's from the at least the East Coast 
or from the uh, south of the equator, but the problem is you don't know where your food comes from, and it's very hard to trace it back. Just because it's uh, manufactured or processed somewhere doesn't mean that you know where it's from. It says, indeed, mainstream Japanese newspaper Nikki reports that it was President Obama and Secretary of Hate Clinton who have presumed, who has pressured the Japanese to restart that country's nuclear program after the Japanese government vowed to end all nuclear power in the wake of the Fukushima disaster. Bet you didn't know any of this, did you? Japanese media has been saying for some time that it was the U.S. government who pressured the NODA administration to drop the zero nuke by 2030, which morphed into zero nuke sometime in the 2030s, <clears throat> from its new reactor and environmental policy decision. It says, um, it's hard to believe that this president has time for trivial matters like actually governing the affairs uh, inside and outside the U.S. during an election year. Friends, there's a lot of money in this. And we know that uh, nuclear, nuclear power is absolutely impossible to exist without uh, subsidies, which is tax dollars that you and I are paying to be poisoned. Do you know even when they run properly... Are you aware that there are a myriad of studies? It won't be hard for you to check it if you doubt me on this. There are a myriad of studies that have talked a lot about how even when these plants are running properly, cancer rates are through the roof. Look up what a routine release is. Like like uh, the earlier, the aforementioned Caldecott said, uh, it's just a routine cancer. There is no such thing. And that's what these routine releases cause, by the way. Listen to this, a New York Times. Japan committed to nuclear power despite the Fukushima fiasco. With the pull of a lever, control rods were lifted Tuesday from the reactor core at a plant in southern Japan, ending a ban on nuclear power following meltdowns at Fukushima. In other words, they took the nuke plants away and now they're bringing them back again. And don't give me this BS about global warming. First of all, man is not warming the planet, and the planet has not warmed at all in the last 15 years. Those two things are absolute fact. Um, beyond that, even if you were someone that believed falsely, as it were, that man was warming the planet, that wouldn't matter. Because the amount of energy that is used just to mine uranium in order to make the plants run are worse for the environment than a coal plant is. So this is not helping the environment. Crowded energy scarce Japan remains committed to nuclear power despite the March 2011 incidents, which has seen cancer fly through the roof. We'll get to that in a minute. Polls show that most Japanese don't want nuclear power, but public opinion has been trumped by leaders who say keeping the country's 43 workable reactors offline forever would be too damaged economically. Yeah, economically. Never mind the fact that putting them back online, especially in what is currently and still an active earthquake zone, um, could jeopardize the lives of millions of people. That doesn't matter. What matters is that uh, we can keep these reactors going for the good of the bottom line, which is going to benefit the people that are in office now. They may not even be in office in a couple years, and nobody will remember who they are, and they will have gotten, gotten away with this. It's interesting to note how many people, by the way, uh, have a lot of stake and stock in all things nuclear, how often they own homes and uh, on faraway islands and south, south of the equator where there are no nuke plants. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that is? Because they know. They know exactly what they've invested in. They know where their money has come from and they know where they don't want to be. Through two other, though two other nuclear reactors briefly resumed operations after the Fukushima meltdowns, we covered that here. Japan has gone completely without nuclear power for nearly two years under tighter new regulations, which would have been, you know, sanity. Reactors remained idle pending safety inspections. Nuclear plants had provided nearly a third of power generation before they were taken offline. So Japan ramped up the use of coal, oil, and gas to compensate. That, was in, that has increased energy costs and slowed Japan's progress toward reducing emissions. To hell with emissions. You're not warming the planet. Um, nuclear is worse for you than the damage the coal does to your lungs in the air, so you can't argue that. 
the people of Japan have been paying more, and you know what? They're still on the side of not having the reactors. So you can't make it an issue of uh, energy price because the people of Japan are not demanding this. It's being forced upon them. It said nuclear power plants have provided nearly a third of power generation before they were taken offline. So Japan ramped up the use of coal, oil, and gas. Well, I bet they did. And it hasn't hurt anything. If, if, if anything, the amount of cancers, uh, maybe lung cancers could go up, but every other cancer is going to go down because there's not all these routine releases going on. This is this idiot. Nuclear power is indispensable. Industry Minister y Yochi Miyazawa, M-I-Y-A-Z-A-W-A, -A -A, said Tuesday, pledging to put safety first on the Sendai 1 nuclear reactor as it resumed operations. Safety first would mean shutting it down. Safety first would mean never having built it to begin with and dismantling it as quickly as possible and getting all of these things off of the Japan Islands for good because it's, it's still an earthquake zone. We still have issues there dealing with this awful mess that they've started. It says, Japan's 126 million people live smack on the Pacific Rim of the Ring of Fire. It's a seismically active region. That means lots of earthquakes for you Lady Gaga fans. Studded with volcanoes and riven with major geological faults. That means the things that cause meltdowns. And remember, the earthquake was causing some of the meltdowns prior to the tidal wave ever reaching. That's that's it's fact. You can you can look it up just by studying the way the plant melted down. It's it's online. It's not hard to find. The country invested heavily in nuclear power to help alleviate its nearly in nearly complete reliance on imported fuels. So it, it's all about the money. And even though the people are paying more for energy and they don't want nuclear, it's going to be forced upon them because of the amount of money that a very small number of people are making. Largely unelected. It says utilities are seeking approvals for restarts of 23 other reactors, including the second at Sunday. Two others are under construction. They want to build more. Many communities don't want their reactors back online, and experts are idled. Plans deteriorate quickly. Yeah, so they need to be dismantled and taken down. The average Japanese citizen seems to be understanding this. And it looks like, remember, remember Greece, they voted to leave the European Union if they had to, and the government stabbed, they elected to stand up for them, stabbed them in the back. That's what you're seeing here in Japan. It's the same vile people, the same evil banks that fund the nuke industry to some degree are the same ones that are forcing this thing along in Japan because they need the money tied up into this. You can follow the same trail to the same number of organizations and wherever it leads, it always uh, it's always bad for the average person. Thankfully, the average person in Japan seems to be getting it. It's time to occupy nuke plants. I don't mean violently. I just mean if they're going to drill there, camp there, refuse to let them break ground, do not leave thousands of you. They can't arrest thousands of you. They can't put you all in jail at one time. Where are they going to put you all? It's not going to work. And only these kinds of actions are going to lead to these things not being built. And there are other things you can do to have them, of course, shut down. But you need a lot more people. I get a few hundred people that watch these. That's great. We need a lot more people than that if we're going to be able to do anything. And you can see what it's doing all around us. Listen to this. Sputnik News. 50% of young people living near Fukushima are suffering from thyroid cancer. 50% of the people who are near the new plant have thyroid cancer. Vladimir Slivyak, it's S-L-I-V-Y-A-K, from Russian NGO Eco-Defense, and Harvey Wasserman, an American senior editor and columnist, discussed the horrendous situation in Japan where over 48% of some of the 360,000 young people have recently been identified as suffering from precancerous thyroid abnormalities. Anybody still want, wanting to debate me about how safe nuclear is? 
39 months after the Fukushima nuclear accident in Japan, which is much quicker than many people thought that it would show up, but I, I've been saying all along at these high of doses that you was exactly what you were going to see, unfortunately. The, the biggest terror ever, cancer. Only now are the Japanese authorities getting around to organizing extensive health checks. Despite the fact that incidences of cancer are up 40 times, Japan's prime minister is attempting to restart the country's nuclear program, which I just said a minute ago. It said, how accurate is the research carried out by Japanese authorities? This is Wasserman. Very accurate. The Fukushima Medical University is a private institution, but it gets government money. It is one of the few independent agencies that's been looking into the health effects of the Fukushima accident. One thing that the nuclear power industry has been very good at over the decades is not studying the health impacts of nuclear power. And in this case, we have an independent institution which is gathering data. So what did they find? The study has been involving somewhat more than 400,000 local children, and there have been results that have come in about a quarter of a million. We've had 40 times the normal thyroid cancer death rate and 40 times the normal or thereabout thyroid abnormality rate. Cysts and tumors and other problems with the thyroid among children. And the number is going up, as you would expect, because the iodine that came out of Fukushima affected people. But the effects continue to spread over the time and we expect the situation to get worse. In other words, it just washes into the ground, it rains, it falls again, falls on another community, soaks it up, repeat, repeat, repeat. It can juice you more than once. It'll do it for the entire life. And iodine, I think, I want to say the half-life is uh, over 30 years. Uh, and they ask, has there been a press clampdown on information surrounding children's cancer rates? As far as I can see, over the last 8 to 12 months, there's been hardly anything at all about any mainstream media press over the whole world. And this is Wasserman again. Right, it is actually the corporate press that is refusing to cover this. There has been some coverage among the websites, like the one I edit, nukefree.org, and especially now after net neutrality goes away, which is why you should keep an eye on that. This coverage won't get anywhere. The reality is that the corporate media has clamped down entirely on this. And of course, in Japan, with the support of the American government, the very pro-nuclear Shinzo Abe regime <clears throat> has passed a state secret act where you are actually in jeopardy for your health and safety if you publish facts about the damage from Fukushima. They're doing everything they can to lie to all of you about what's happening here, and I'm giving you the facts. Hit share on this, friends. Get this out to other people. If you know someone eating seafood, smack them in the head. So this is a serious situation, and we know that the Soviet Union and the old Soviet Union states, Belarus and uh, Ukraine, have not been particularly forthcoming about what was happening either. And we know, look up Belarus deformities, Chernobyl deformities, you'll see what they're talking about here. It goes on, the corporate nuclear industry with its power within the corporate media does a very good job of suppressing the health data that shows the damage and of course the denials are automatic and extremely well funded. So I gather that the UN Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation is issuing reports which seem to downplay or not mention it at all. The problems connected, excuse me, to the Fukushima on humans after the accident. Wasserman. No, the UN is actually a very pro-nuclear organization. You have the UN and the IAEA which actually promote nuclear power and they have an agreement with the World Health Organization where the promoters of the nuclear power at the UN censor any finding about Fukushima or any other nuclear accident. Again, you can look this up. Here are the sources. Look up Wasserman's work here. Last November 7th, he says, I presented with a grassroots organization 150,000 signatures to the UN, to Ban Ki-moon, the Secretary General of the UN, asking that a world body take over the situation at Fukushima and deal with the ongoing disaster. <clears throat> and we have never gotten a response. 150,000 signatures personally delivered to his office and no response whatsoever. 
And it says, why are some governments planning to restart these reactors? Here's what he says. What is happening now is that the effects of the Fukushima accident have really been felt in Japan. And the people have responded by forcing the shutdown of 54 reactors in Japan, as they should do. And it said that the Daily Mail, that's another paper, of course, has just published an article that the Prime Minister of Japan has revealed the new basic energy plan will push to bring the country's 48 reactors back online. Does that, does that, does that make anybody really, really uh, concerned, or just me? The, the, the earthquakes are still happening there. They're reported on all the time. It's not even rare. And yet, out of nowhere, it's like somehow nobody sees any of this. None of this is real. None of it matters. And friends, what I'm going to do here in a minute is get on to how this actually affects you the, in, in part, in, outside of Japan. Before I do that, and don't zone out, I want to make sure I give a shout out to Sticker Junkie. It's awesome to have a company that makes things this awesome as a sponsor of the show. Go to StickerJunkie.com. I'll let David Lake know that you heard about the uh, Sticker Junkie from the Correct Views. You're going to get a discount <clears throat> on your stickers when you do that. Um, also, make sure you go to, uh, you can look up uh, Passing Time, the Alexandrian Solution. I'm Sam from Passing Time at YouTube.com. There's a video up where I want to give you this ticket to come see Pop Relief itself at Legendary Cleveland Agora. I'm going to be opening that show with my band Passing Time. You're going to get autographs from Pop Will Eat itself. You're going to get all kinds of really cool stuff just by doing what the video says. It, it's, it should be a really cool contest. The video is like, what, five minutes long, something like that. Uh, YouTube.com slash Sam from Passing Time. And, of course, uh, look up the Alexandrian Solution Passing Time. We come up immediately. The most recent video there, the contest, is the one that's going to attract you, I'm sure. Friends, listen to this, moving on as to how this affects you. Seafood lovers, beware of something fishy. And this is uh, nzherald.co.nz. Uh, not particularly good news here. Seafood lovers are being warned that their fishy feast could contain high levels of radiation. New research has found concentrated la levels of radiation in some of New Zealand's favorite seafood, including bluff oysters, shipjack tuna, Green shell mussels, pula, pala, queen scallop, rock lobster, and little neck clams. I guess they even affect the video for those of you on HD. Chemical contaminants in seafood can cause significant health problems, the researchers said. If eating fish is culturally important to you, or you rely on fishing and self shellfish collection to feed your family, you're most at risk. A, in 2011, the Fukushima meltdown was most likely to blame for the high levels of radiation. Now, you don't say. Um, how many times have you guys heard uh, instances where they have said uh, that they use the information from the fallout of uh, Nagasaki and the bombings of World War II in Japan? They have used data collected on cancer rates from that explosion to measure meltdown and fallout issues for any kind of accident that's happened since. Well, that's, that's quite faulty, and I have a, a lot of science here to back up why that is. TheEcologist.org. After Fukushima and, excuse me, after Hiroshima, how about that, and Nagasaki, a third nuclear atrocity, which was, of course, the corruption of science. Listen to this. Following the atomic bombs exploded over Japan in 1945, a second crime against humanity took place, writes Chris Busby. And when Chris Busby speaks, he's who wrote this. You want to listen. He's probably the most brilliant mind with all things nuclear alive today, Dr. Chris Busby. The deliberate falsification of science to hide the dangers of ionizing radiation, he writes, perpetuated to quell public opposition to a new age of nuclear bombs and energy. The fraud continues to this day, but finally the truth is winning out. Good news. On the 70th anniversary of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, articles are appearing everywhere discussing the historical, philosophical, scientific, public health, and social meaning of this event. I almost wrote war crime, and you could argue that he should have because we didn't have to do that. We were actually warned that you, uh, we were warned about Pearl Harbor before it ever happened, for one thing. But that's, a, stick with the article. 
Sam gets sidetracked too much. The bombings can be extrapolated onward in time through the atmospheric testing fallout in Chernobyl to the more recent contamination in Japan after Fukushima. Today, Chris Busby writes, the analysis of the health risks from the Japanese A-bombs is being cleverly twisted to provide a rationale for the development of nuclear weapons and nuclear energy. Did you hear that? Hiroshima and Nagasaki are not just some historical tableau that has can, that we can weep crocodile tears or tears over and discuss as socio-historic phenomena. They are here today, present as ghosts in all the manipulations and devious calculations made by the international radiation risk agencies and nuclear industry scientists giving results that continue to permit the release into the environment of the same deadly substance, substances that emerged for the first time in 1945. How many of you uh, don't know this? Uh, a lot of the elements that are created in nuclear explosions did not exist on the planet until we did this. That's why it's so devastating to our bodies because it's not supposed to be here. And it's a poison is what it is. Abusing Hiroshima to deny nuclear bomb health damage, please listen to this. I am currently presenting a case to the British Atomic Test Veterans in the Royal Courts of Justice in London. The case pivots on the faulty radiation and health risk model that is based on the lifespan study of the Japanese A-bomb survivors. This model of the International Commission of Radiological Protection is used by the Ministry of Defense in the courts to deny responsibility for the cancers in the nuclear test veterans and the congenital disease of the children and grandchildren. In other words, they're saying, based on faulty data, that they're not responsible for the, the destruction of these families. However, the Hiroshima model also predicts that those exposed to radiation and fallout from future nuclear exchanges would suffer little downstream genetic damage. Thus, the Dr. Strangelove and generals can argue that the nuclear war is in fact winnable and that the increases in cancer and genetic effects in those exposed to depleted uranium in Iraq somehow don't exist. Uh, he's talking about two things at once there. Um, uh, one is if they wanted to use nuclear weapons against North Korea, because of course they've been threatening us with it forever now, they would argue that they could do a small nuclear attack in North Korea that would not affect the people in the South, and they would be using the faulty data that is based on bad science from the World War II bombings to make that somehow, to make that case and uh, he's explaining why that isn't the uh, best way to go, why that is, in fact, quackery, not science. Second of all, we use something called depleted uranium in Iraq, and uh, depleted uranium is something that makes uh, projectiles explode, like bullets and whatnot. This is creating a health problem, such as isn't really seen except in places like the earlier mentioned Belarus. So he's also mentioning that depleted uranium need to be taken off the battlefield immediately and never used. Said the bogus analysis of the health outcomes from the Hiroshima has left the world with a major public health problem. In an effort to refute the mounting evidence, the ICRP model was relaunched by the Lancet to coincide with the Hiroshima anniversary. A whole issue is given over to the presentation of wacko accounts of the health consequences of Fukushima, Chernobyl, and Fukushima through articles at least partly written by those who hold the reins of the ICRP chariot. In other words, there's people who have an investment in having these studies come out the way they want because they're invested in nuke and they are not, uh, they're not objective at all. They're deliberately skewing the science. The linkage between Hiroshima and Nagasaki and Fukushima are thus more than just symbolic, having shaped the current health management practices and the institutions that run them as well as public responses to these events. However, these current health management practices are widely in error. Listen to this about nuclear war. Everyone has seen the photos of Hiroshima. 
the primitive uranium-235 bomb Little Boy that fell on Hiroshima with an explosive power of 13 kilotons, that is 13,000 tons of TNT, which of course was the non-nuclear explosive, chemical explosive. It flattened the city and killed 80,000 people, of which 45,000 died on the first day. Within four months, the death toll was about 140,000 people. Three days after Hiroshima, a 20 kiloton plutonium bomb, Fat Man, was dropped on Nagasaki. Why? Did the U.S. think perhaps the Hiroshima bomb might have been overlooked? That's a good question, he asks. Both weapons were mostly made of uranium. Note that since then, from 1950, a study of the survivors by the U.S. funded Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission and later the Radiation Effects Research Foundation has defined the relationship between radiation dose and cancer. This is terrible. Listen to this. In passing, recall that the explosive power was 13 kilotons. Anyone who wants nightmares should buy the standard work, The Effects of Nuclear Weapons, by Samuel Glastone, the physical chemist. The more recent versions of this book have a nifty little plastic calculator in the back where you may by rotating the bezel, inform yourself of the radii of the blast, radiation dose, dose, building destruction, or size of the bomb. The U.S. has spent lots of money and time blowing up stuff in Nevada and the Pacific test sites to obtain this data. Uh, keep in mind, it's one of the things that killed John Wayne. Modern thermonuclear warheads, of which there are currently some 150,000, pack 800 kilotons of TNT. Just one of these jobs would put paid to most of New York, Tehran, or Jerusalem. Imagine, New York, just one of them. I visualize some poor civil defense chief sitting in a shelter somewhere desperately twisting the scales of this petty nuclear bomb effects computer developed by the Lovelace Institute, worth waiting from the ground to disappear. In other words, what we're talking about now is so much bigger and so much more destructive, and uh, some of these elements in ways that are long and boring go up in orders of magnitude, not just uh, regular percentages. It says, nuclear war is not longer, is, is not longer, unthink I meant think they meant no longer, they wrote not longer, unthinkable. The problem we have in the world in 2015 is that the economic system and power relations between countries encourages those taking big decisions to think in terms of geopolitical strategies that include the use of nuclear weapons. In other words, countries have not ruled out these devices of death. It says there are potential resource wars. There are food production issues following changes in global weather patterns. There are technological developments in what were historically manipulable countries. Nuclear weapons are now in the hands of nine nations, including three which are not party to the Non-Nuclear Proliferation Treaty. That would be India, Pakistan, and North Korea. And again, of all of them, North Korea being one of the most unstable countries in all of history, and they have a bomb. Nego negotiations with Iran are currently argued to be of tremendous importance in a region where Israel has the nuclear potential to wipe out the local Arab states at a sitting. Of course, we know what the fallout then would do to Israel, so that's not something that should be on the table. And I think a lot of that is what Busby is saying here. The Russians have massive nuclear capabilities and are being baited to their borders in Ukraine by NATO and those who control NATO. That is very true. This shirt stirring and now has moved to the Baltic states. He writes, I live in Lativia, In this spring I saw a new tank from the Lativian flag rolling through the center of Rapazi, a small town 40 kilometers west of Rigir, near where I live. Every day, the sky overhead had big helicopters and transport aircraft donated to the Lativians by the U.S. But why? The Baltic states and Poland are conscripting armies to defend the motherland against invasions by the Russians. So what's going on? Well, listen to this. A systemic cover-up of nuclear dangers. In all the high-level st strategic thinking that is associated with this nuclear war monitoring, the post-attack population death yields from the fallout are computed according to the ICRP risk model. But that Hiroshima model is a chemical construction built in the Cold War to back up the atmospheric testing. 
the observable effects, which is increases in infant mortality and the 1980s cancer epidemic, were covered up following a 1959 agreement, there's a link here if you want to read it, between the International Atomic Energy Agency and the World Health Organization, which left the IAEA, the nuclear physicists, the bomb makers, and the deniers of Chernobyl and Fukushima's effects in charge of the research into health. In other words, they had the science deck stacked before the game ever started. Said so it remains to this day with the Lancet article, Long-Term Effects of Radiation Exposure on Health. And another link, co-written by particle physicist Richard Wakeford, ex-head of research of British nuclear fuels at Sellafield, the nuclear industry representative in the UK, SARI Committee, member of the ICRP, advisor to the Japanese on Fukushima, and so forth. The evidence from real studies of the offspring of the test veterans and the soldiers and civilians exposed to depleted uranium is that a nuclear war will end life on Earth as we know it. The test veterans have tenfold excess risk of children with birth defects, ninefold in the grandchildren. Although millions will be blasted away, the real outcome will be the global sterility, cancer, and malformation. All of the Mad Max stuff, but worse. Hollywood got it right. In other words, it will. It, even if you live, you won't be able to have kids, and you will be miserable, and you will be sick, starving, freezing, and everything you know about the world and everything you've ever learned in it we'll, we'll be back to the days of the cavemen and uh, that's what Einstein said when he said we use rocks on the other side evidence and errors in the Hiroshima lifespan studies if you find that there is a doubling of breast cancer or child leukemia in those living downwind of a nuclear power station as I mentioned earlier at an estimated dose less than external background, the ICRP model tells you that the effect cannot be due to the releases from the power station because the dose is too low. It's safe. The epidemiologist Martin Tundall found in 2004 that there was a significant excess cancer risk in northern Sweden after Chernobyl. And that's why, again, the nuclear power, it's not that Iran should be free to do it, it's that nobody should be free to do it because it doesn't just affect